What's going on everyone and welcome to Archive Ending Explained where I look at the movie Archive and kind of give my thoughts and opinion about the ending. This is spoiler filled so just to let you know just to be aware. Before we begin please hit that subscribe button to join the movie important. Hit that notification bell at the top to find what's coming next and uh, comment below on any video that you watch including this one. So as I said in my actual review uh, Archive basically follows George and he's isolated up in like Hungary or the mountains. It's very snowy and stuff like that. And he's created artificial intelligence and he's created three different robots he's created j1 which is a more like uh like a youngish kiddish version of a robot ai he's built j2 which becomes the more main protagonist in this movie with the more learned but 16 to 15 year old mentality and then he creates j3 which is a prototype which looks a lot like his wife who's played by stacy martin and so he has to kind of deal with the three personalities with J3 having the most um, most well-rounded personality, well-rounded ideas and logic and so on and so forth. And as we see, J2 unfortunately commits suicide in the lake. And that is depressing and sad and kind of heartbreaking, as like I said. And it leads into this idea that George is constantly building, constantly upgrading his work that he's doing. He's very self-involved very like committed to his job which is for, through arm which is kind of interesting and he talks to his wife through this black box which is very similar to like how or something like that it's very similar to, like something you would see in blade runner where it, the screen that he talks to his wife through is very very small very outdated and very kind of low tech it doesn't seem like something we would work with today with how skype and zoom and everything works but the thing about this that I was actually surprised that people don't catch on with is he never is able to contact his wife. His wife always has to contact him. If he is in fact there and living, wouldn't he be able to contact his wife? Wouldn't it be the reverse? She is the robot, the AI, the brain inside the AI box, and he is the living, breathing person. Well, everything plays out. He basically it's let known through the Ronan uh, Mitra character and through like the Toby Jones and stuff like that. He's basically committed sin. He's basically created, you know, a Frankenstein level of creativity, and they're after him. And all of a sudden, he injects his uh, wife's brain the chip that he has into J3 to make her real because J3 is her own self, you know, re uh, reliant person. And this, he was doing this so he could have his wife. Well, after everything is said and done and his wife is finally in the body of J3, there is no one around anymore. There are people that were going to attack him. You see him, the Toby Jones and the, the AI security guards in the very early portions of the film. But then the doors open and there's nothing there. And with that said, if you really start thinking about it, why is George up in this secluded location? Why is he there? What is going on with his world? Why is he so committed to this project? What is going on? Why doesn't he ever leave? What's with the wolf? What's with the fact that when he goes to this weird, like, neon-looking place that's, uh, of course, you know, in the outer reaches of where he lives, there's this guy that we don't really ever see. He gives him a box with a gun. The gun is like when he opens it, it causes all the doors to, you know, close and secure. What is really going on here? And what I have come to conclude after watching this film is George actually didn't survive the car crash. He is having nightmares of the car crash, but we never see the after effects of the car crash itself. We see bits and pieces, and then we see small snippets of like the actual conclusion to the car crash, but we never see what happens. And what is like i said with the guy i think is a kind of defense mechanism kind of protection to george kind of coming to the realization of what's going on the wolf is kind of like a defense mechanism the toby jones is kind of like the um the guy in recall from total recall who's there to as kind of a guide kind of just keeping an eye on george and the tinkering with the box and stuff like that and uh one thing you have to also consider is he calls up tech support because he can't get a hold of his wife which is he knows this throughout the entire movie tech support answers and he tells them you had people come visit me to work on this box and the tech support is like i don't know what you're talking about well i'm going Okay, that's weird. Uh, this is either like a tripping, where he's tripping balls or something like that, or things are like very becoming unstable. I mean, I don't know what's going on. And the kind of big giveaway that this is him in the box instead of his wife 
is the the person that he's talking to like repeats itself almost like an answering machine and it's a very strange very kind of weird esque sci-fi esque moment where like the technology is not perfect and i always thought that was kind of fascinating because when you watch it there's something off about his character when he's talking to him and the fact that he's coming to the realization that something is not right about the world he's living in and it's that guy just adds in another level of crazy weirdness that just kind of adds into the whole nature of you thinking about what's the state of his reality and like i said the fact that he can't talk to him the guy that talks to him says this is your last call uh, are you ready to kind of pat, move on to the other dimension life or whatever goes, you know, beyond dying? And uh, it's just a very weird moment and kind of kind of almost like a uh, kind of a brain explosion going, oh, I see where this is going. So that kind of when you think about that type of thing. So and what basically has come to the conclusion is George actually never made it out of that car crash that his wife actually did. And the reason for that is, is we see snippets throughout the entire movie of them arguing about getting this black box if someone dies. George is very for it. His wife is very against it. I don't think he, he claims that he would never do something like that to his wife. But I think his wife was so guilt ridden about what happened, about what the cause of the crash that killed him that I think she did it out of just wanting to see him for a few more times because you get like 200 hours of like talking to him and stuff like that but i also think j1 j2 and j3 are different levels of emotion of george having to accept the his fate that he's no longer at the end of this movie going to be there for her for the stacy martin character and j1 is a very simple character it shows the kind of uh level of like determination and stuff like that because it's always determined to go wherever it needs to to go outside j2 i think is his conscious and how guilt-ridden he feels how sad he feels and he tries to bury that by like basically having j2 commit suicide and having j3 which he's trying to get his wife back and i think the whole idea is just the guilt-ridden nature of his character i think he puts himself in isolation i think he puts him up there to keep himself calm i think it's just a whole matter of how we want to view life in the matter of death and i think that's really kind of poetic in a lot of ways because he's a guy that loved his wife his wife loved him a tragedy occurred and he died because of it and the biggest kind of revelation is they had a kid now there are references to her constantly checking her belly we never get any kind of instances about her telling him but there are kind of inklings and little Bread comes, little bread comes around about maybe she's pregnant. And when he picks up the phone after J3 has talked to her, saying he's going to take care of her, he picks up the phone, he talks to his wife, and then we hear the kid. And at that point, you start to come to a realization that not only is this not the way it seems, but it has done a complete 180. So what you have been watching is the inside of a house style black box inside the mechanics we're always seeing like this shot where it travels through slowly towards through these circuits and breakers and computer chips and stuff like that and it's really starting to like eke in your mind and, like there's something unsettling about this world it's like he's running through the snow and it's very cloudy and very foggy and like i said it's just why would he work here if he has his i mean yes he's trying to get away from the dealing with his wife but just there's something always uncomfortable and unsettling about his world that he lives in as beautiful as it is and then at the very end we see his wife we see the toby jones character like i said he's almost like the, the mortician or the kind of curator of this black box and we see this kid and we see him like kind of dissipate and disappear leading to the fact that he's no longer alive his consciousness is officially gone and i think that's kind of like i said poetic in a lot of ways because he died but he was able to still be there for his wife in some form or fashion and even in the last moments of death um he is still you know still trying to do better trying to get past the guilt rated nature and and this movie reminded me a lot of san junipiero which is the mckenzie davis uh gugu beth and raw uh black mirror episode where at first you're like kind of like interested in this 80s kind of neo-noistic world where they play games 
this, these two are very compatible with each other. Then time starts going all over the place. You know, it's, it becomes a weird kind of strange journey until we realize that the, uh, I think it's the Mackenzie Davis character is officially dying. The Gugu uh, and Beth Ra is alive, but they have the ability to basically connect their brains to this San Junipero network. And at the very end, they're kind of put into this big computer tower uh, system or whatever. And this is kind of similar to the same thing. This is a way for people to kind of live on in death. So in the in the end, my honest opinion, everybody, there might be some other opinions about this movie, but in my honest opinion, George died. This was his last kind of remnants of his life, and he did ways and used ways to kind of keep himself busy and motivated to keep himself in the realization of what actually happened. So, uh, but yeah, um, like I said, it's a, a really interesting movie. It's a very Black Mirror-ish, Twilight Zone style movie. And it has some great performances from AI robots. So, go figure. So, so that's it. That is my what I think the ending to Archive is and what it's really about. Uh, if you have a different opinion, let me know in the comments below. You know, this is a spoiler review, so have at it. You know, write paragraphs. I don't really care. I'm really up to interpretation on what you truly think about this movie. Um, I know a lot of people are confused, so, you know, maybe hopefully this helps. But anyways, uh, if you like this video, cool. Hit that like button. If you disliked it, it is what it is. Also, uh, subscribe to my channel, Movie Important, if you enjoy the channel. And the uh, notification bell at the top to find out what's coming next. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out. What's up, guys? Thank you so much for checking out Movie Emporium. I really appreciate it. If you want to, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification button and the bell at the top. Find out what's coming next for Movie Emporium. Also, check out these two videos. They're amazing. I think they're awesome. I think you'll enjoy them, too. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.